Hey everyone, welcome to Judging for the Win. I'm Dave, and this is my daily ruling. Today's question comes to us from the True Stories collection. As in, it actually happened at an event that I was actually judging. Amy plays an Archon of Cruelty. Both players adjust their life totals accordingly, Amy draws a card, and Nick discards a card, but Nick does not sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, even though he does control a Karn the Great Creator. This would be his only legal option to sacrifice for the purposes of this question. After Amy passes her turn, Nick goes to his turn, and he untaps and draws, and he activates the minus two ability of Karn in order to get a Sky Sovereign into his hand. At this, Sam, a spectator, points out that Nick should have sacrificed his Karn during the previous turn. At this point, the players call for a judge. What is the appropriate infraction, penalty, and fix? Okay, so before I go too deep into this scenario, I want to spend a little bit of time briefly talking about Sam's role in all of this. While what Sam did is pretty much exactly what I would expect to have happen at a regular REL environment, so for example, an FNM or a pre-release sort of thing, especially if you're in an event where there isn't an official judge, then that would be perfectly great. However, if we were at a more serious event, then this might be a little bit problematic. Sam told the players that there was something that didn't happen in the game that was supposed to. And even though this is normally a good practice to do, it can be a little bit delicate, especially in cases where you have a triggered ability. In fact, it might even be considered outside assistance if Sam were to remind the players about a triggered ability that should have happened but that they had both missed. Because of this sort of consideration, the desired thing for Sam to do at competitive rel or a more serious tournament would be to actually ask the players to pause their match and go and get a judge, then explain away from the table to the judge what the issue is, and let the judge take it from there. Actually, at professional rules enforcement level, so that would be something like day two of a Grand Prix or the Magic World Championships or some super duper serious event like that, then it's actually required for Sam to not even tell the players to pause their match, but to just get the judge straight away. I wanted to be sure that I brought this up because this is actually one of only a handful of differences between competitive and professional rules enforcement level, so I definitely did not want to miss my opportunity to get to talk about it here. Okay, so that's what we would expect from Sam. Now, Sam being a spectator does not have any obligation at all to point out any mistakes that are seen in the match. It's of course great if Sam wants to do that, but there is of course no tournament obligation for Sam to do so. On the other hand, the players do have an obligation to point out or call attention to any mistakes that they see in their match. So that's another thing that I wanted to be sure that I brought up. Okay, so now let's take a look at what a judge would do if this infraction actually happened in a Magic tournament. And we'll start at regular rel, because I think that this is a little bit more straightforward. With regular rel, we actually have a lot more latitude to change what we do in response to an error to fit the needs of the situation. And especially with kind of thorny and complicated situations like this, that extra latitude generally can lead to a better fix and better player satisfaction. So if I were to see this happen in a regular rules enforcement environment, I would probably say that the fairest way to resolve this situation would be for Nick to put the Sky Sovereign back into his sideboard and to put the Karn into his graveyard. And even though a bunch of other stuff might have happened in the game in the meanwhile, I think that taking care of those points would probably do a pretty good job of putting us back on the path that we would have gone on if the game had proceeded naturally with no mistakes happening. Of course, this is what we would do at regular rel. At competitive or higher rules enforcement level, we would have to do a little bit more diligence in order to make sure that the fix that we proposed would actually match with the policy documents that we have. All right, so in one of those environments, the first thing we would need to do is correctly identify what infraction has been committed. Now, your first impulse might be to jump to a missed trigger. And while it is true that the Archon of Cruelty ability that makes you do all that stuff does happen to be a triggered ability, the appropriate infraction would not be missed trigger in this case. The reason for that is because we didn't actually miss this triggered ability. Rather, we did most of the stuff that you would have to do to perform all the instructions of this triggered ability. It's just that one of those specific instructions was left out. So we didn't actually miss this trigger, we just incorrectly performed the instructions that are associated with that trigger. 
And that is in fact enough for the policy documents to consider this to be a different type of infraction, namely a game rule violation. Now, the next thing that we want to talk about is which player would we assess a game rule violation to? And if you were to ask the players, well, you know, Amy would probably say that because Nick didn't do something that he was supposed to do, then he should be getting penalized. Of course, if you talk to Nick, he would probably argue that it's Amy's triggered ability, so she's the one that should bear the responsibility for making sure that its instructions got carried out properly. In fact, both of these players have arguments with some merit to them. And that's the reason why the Magic the Gathering policy documents specify that in a case like this, both players will be getting a warning for a game rule violation. Now that we've figured out what the correct infraction and penalty to assign is, now let's take a look at what we should do for the fix. And this is where things get really, really interesting. Okay, so for a game rule violation, there's actually a handful of different options that we have available that are policy supported fixes. First thing that I want to talk about would be a backup. Now, a backup would be defined as undoing all of the game actions that have happened from the point that we're at now all the way up until the point where the error was committed. So at minimum, based on the information provided in the problem statement, that would include getting the Sky Sovereign back into Nick's sideboard, undoing Nick's draw step and untap step, and going back to the point in Amy's turn where they're resolving the ability of Archon of Cruelty. Now, this has some good benefits in that we definitely have the possibility to get back to a game state that we should be getting to. However, we do also have a couple of problems with this. The first thing that I want to point out is that, well, Nick has a potential opportunity for some advantage here. Given that we're undoing Nick's draw step, the way we would do that is by returning a card at random from Nick's hand to the top of his library. Now, that could prove to be really problematic, because if Nick has some way to shuffle his library, like, for example, a fetch land, which are commonly played in lots of formats, then that might give Nick an opportunity to improve one of his draws. If a card that he doesn't like gets randomly chosen to be put back on top of his library, then before Nick gets to draw, he might choose to shuffle his library and upgrade that card into a new random replacement. So that's not a great thing, for our solution to have. Another problem that we might run into is, well, we set a specific set of circumstances in the problem statement. However, in a real game, it's easy to imagine a situation where there were some more game actions that Amy or Nick or both of them would have performed in between the point where the error happened and where we are now. Of course, any additional game actions that happened in the actual scenario would also have to be backed up. And the more game actions that you put onto that stack, the more chances for something to go wrong, either for someone to gain an advantage by getting information early and using that information in a time when they shouldn't have normally had access to it, or being able to take advantage of random elements in a backup to gain some sort of an advantage, or maybe we just have so many game options happening that it's not really feasible to back through all of them. The players might not remember all the details that we would need in order to back up, or the players might not remember the order that something happened in a case where that might be relevant. All kinds of problems can happen if you try to back up through too many game actions. Okay, so what if we don't want to do a backup? What other alternatives do we have? Well, the next one that I want to talk about would be leaving the game state as is. So that would just mean that we're going to say that the game state has progressed so far past the point of the error that it's not really feasible to back up, and we're just going to instruct the players to continue playing from the point that we are at right now. Now, of course, the players are still going to be getting the warnings for a game rule violation. We're just not going to be doing anything in the game to fix the error. Obviously, this has some issues too. Namely, Nick now has a card in his hand, the Sky Sovereign, that he got using the Karn minus two ability. And he wouldn't have been able to do that if he would have correctly put the Karn in his graveyard. Also, he has the Karn in play still, which again, he would not have had access to if he would have correctly put the Karn into his graveyard. So either one of those would be a gigantic advantage with definite potential to affect the outcome of the game. And if we're just going to leave the game state as is, we're not doing anything in our fix to address either of those potential game-changing advantages that Nick now has. Okay, so far things aren't doing too great. Both of the fixes that we've looked at so far have major problems that are associated with them. Fortunately, there's one more trick we have up our sleeves, and this one might be really promising. So in between 
uh, back up and leaving the game state as is, there's a third kind of middle ground option that I'm going to call a partial fix. A partial fix is basically exactly what it sounds like. For certain specifically defined in the IPG infractions, we have a partial fix available that we can do instead of backing up or instead of leaving the game state as is. Rather, we just take the game state that exists right now and perform the partial fix that is associated with the specific game rule violation that the partial fix is designed to address. So if we take a look at the list of different game rule violations that have a partial fix associated with them, we'll find one that seems very promising. That being this one here, which indicates that if we have an object that is in an incorrect game zone due to a required zone change that was missed, and that object is visible to all players, and we can put that object into the correct zone without much disruption to the game state, then we can just put it into the correct zone right now. So let's take a look and see what our situation here has to offer. We definitely do have an object, Karn, that is in the incorrect game zone. Remember we said that Karn was the only legal option for Nick to sacrifice. So the Karn should be in the graveyard. Both players know the identity of Karn and it's possible to take the Karn from where it is now and put it into the graveyard without very much disruption to the game state. So we're already doing a lot better than we did in leaving the game state as is because we were able to nullify one of those big advantages that Nick had that he shouldn't have had access to. Instead of being staying in play, the Karn is actually going to the graveyard. That is awesome. What about the Sky Sovereign though? Is there any way that we could take care of that too? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't fit under the partial fix the way that the Karn does. The reason for that is because the Sky Sovereign is in an improper game zone, yes. Technically, the sideboard doesn't count as a game zone, but because we're dealing with magic policy rather than magic rules, we are able to stretch the definition of what a game zone is, so we would be able to count it here even though the magic comprehensive rules specifically say the sideboard is not a zone. That's not the problem, but the problem is how it got there. You see, it's not in an improper game zone due to a required game zone change being missed, nor is it because of being put into the wrong zone during another game zone change. Rather, it was put into Nick's hand completely correctly. It would have been 100% legal for Nick to make the play that he did, putting the Sky Sovereign into his hand, given the game state that existed at the time when Nick was making that play. So the Sky Sovereign would not be covered under the partial fix the way the Karn would be. However, there is one more thing that we have access to that can help us out. And that is the fact that we can perform a simple backup before we do the partial fix. So as you can see here, if the judge believes that performing a simple backup before doing the partial fix is going to lead to a better game situation, then that's on the table for the judge to do. So a simple backup just means that we're gonna undo the very last game action that happened before the game state that we're in right now. And so what did Nick do immediately before the game state that we're in right now? Why yes, he used the minus two ability from Karn to put that Sky Sovereign into his hand. So if we perform a simple backup, in this situation, then we would undo that, and then we would do the partial fix that's prescribed in the IPG of putting the Karn into its owner's graveyard. And hey, what do you know? We ended up with exactly the same fix that we got at regular rel that I said was a really great option for us. It turns out that if we carefully puzzled through exactly all of the stuff that was going on in this very complicated situation, we were able to find a policy supported fix that matched exactly with what we were trying to do. We definitely can't expect treats like this all the time, and certainly there's going to be some cases of variance between this situation that I've described in the problem statement and stuff that might happen in a real game where it would make some or all of what I've said not be a great idea. However, based on the information that we had access to for this specific situation that I had come up, it turns out that we do actually get a situation with a fix that matches exactly with what we were hoping to do, and I thought that was really awesome. But that's all I have for you today. How did you do? Join me again next time for another daily ruling. But until then, I hope you have a great day.